Hello. I like this filter, so I think I'll continue using it. <laughs> All right, it is day 22 of the abundance book, the 40 day prosperity plan. And initially I had a lot that I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about my experience with plant medicine. I wanted to talk about uh, what it feels like to have parts of you die, to have pieces of your whole life die. Um, and I want to talk to you about sacred sexuality, but I don't, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. First of all, I ate some foods that I was not supposed to eat. My body is like, don't do that again. Um, and I feel like I need to be clear. Like I feel foggy right now. And when I speak to you about those things, I want to feel clear. So today I uh, will go over the statement. And there is something that is coming to mind that um, it's part of an experience that I had today that I think actually ties into the statement. And neighbors are outside playing lots of music, so you're just going to hear it be, you're just going to hear the sounds of the city. All right. Okay, so day 22 is the same as statement two. I lift up my mind and heart to be aware, to understand, and to know that the divine presence I am is the source and substance of all my good. I lift up my mind and heart to be aware to understand and to know that the divine presence I am is the source and substance of all my good. So yesterday, you know, with statement one, source energy is lavish, unfailing abundance, this rich omnipresent substance of the universe and this substance is individualized as you. Statement two, is a deeper understanding of that to say that I lift up my mind and heart to be aware, to understand, and to know that the divine presence I am is the source and substance of all my good. So how does this tie into a couple of things? So I think I want to talk about shame for a little bit, the desire to have other people like us, to seem good or nice in their eyes and how and how relying on this omnipresent substance of the universe as the source of all your good can strip away the need for that so today uh i had uh and a community event that i was at and toward the end of it you know, I'm the type of person where when we're wrapping up, like we're wrapping up, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Everyone's not like that. <laughs> Still too hot. Everyone's not like that. Some people like to meander. Some people like to sit, you know, and nothing wrong with that. It's just, it's just a difference. And I could feel myself getting a bit impatient over the fact that people weren't kind of moving along. And when I feel like I'm not being listened to, as I pointed out my flaws the other day, I can probably come across, I don't want it's not just bitchy, but I can come across like, you know, didn't you hear me type of thing. So I'm certain that I came across a bit rude in some ways. Uh, at least that's what it feels like. Um, I was feeling some kind of way because no one was listening to me. Right? I was like, hey, let's go. And folks were just like chilling, doing their thing. And right? so it kind of hit, it hit my power center. Right? My lack of authority here in this situation. Like no one is, no one's, no one's paying it. Like I have no power here. And so I left because really I wanted to leave and I could have left at any time. Why am I forcing other people to leave? Right. And as I'm walking home, I feel that feeling that you feel when there's like shame, when you feel like you've done something wrong. Like my cheeks felt hot. My stomach felt a little knotted. You know, I could feel the remnants of me trying to have a power struggle with, with the situation. Um, I was worried that People were going to say, you know, God, why was she being like that? 
you know, why was she racing us, rushing us? Like, I, I, could, I could feel all this story coming about, you know, what I thought was going to happen and how I was going to be perceived and whether or not people were going to like me or not and, and, and all of this. And, and the story started to play as I was walking home and I could feel it in my body. And I was like, oh, t -t -t. my body loves that feeling of, no, it doesn't love the feeling. My body is accustomed to this feeling of powerlessness, this feeling of being like the victim in the situation. And so I started to feel a bit victimized by my own actions and behaviors. And then by what I thought were going to be the ideas other people had. So I was feeling ashamed of myself. I'm going to tie this into to, to the statement for today. When I rely on my ego to guide me, it is easy for me to get caught up in what are others thinking about me do they like me do they not like me did i say something wrong you know what is their perception going to be of me is there something different i need to do you know it's very external everything is is very external and i i i want to i want to manage my behavior to meet the expectations of others so that they are okay with me when i live from my egoic space which is pretty much how most of us have been taught to live. You know, fit in. Don't do these things. You don't want to get made fun of, right? Don't, don't be the weird kid. Don't. That's pretty much how most of us have been taught. By well-meaning people who didn't want us to experience any pain. Like, I totally get it. They, they didn't want us to experience hurt or, or, or the worst of human behavior. And so it's a lot easier if you just go along with things because then you don't have to worry about that so much except for going along with things there's no guarantee either because i've done that and people still don't like me anyway <laughs> so how does this tie into the statement for today mm. Mm -mm -mm. i lift up my mind and heart to be aware to understand and to know that the divine presence I am is the source and substance of all my good. So when I live my life from that space, when I live my life from a space of understanding that this omnipresent substance of abundance, the divine presence I am is the source of all of my good, of everything. And you can call it what you want. You know, some of y'all, it's, it's God. It doesn't sound any different than what you might hear in like a Christian church, what I'm saying, right? It's just that I'm not using the dogma or, or Jesus Christ as the reasoning behind this. You know, this is a, a direct connection. Like to me, Yeshua was somebody who showed how to have a direct connection. He's not the person to be worshipped. So that's, that's the real big difference here. When I rely on that source within me, that divine I am, there's nothing for me to be ashamed of. There's no reason for me to focus outward on whether or not people like me, don't like me, managing my behavior, trying to fit in. Those are societal expectations that come and go. Literally come and go. You know, in the 70s, it was okay to do X, Y, and Z. In the 80s, it was different. In the 90s, it was different. In the 2000s, it was different. 50 years from now, it'd be different. We, ego, fluctuates and changes and shifts with the times. But the divine presence I am that is eternal, that is us, is always and always will be. So when I operate from that space... And just talking to you all about it, I because I still had some remnants of the shame. Now, I'm going to tell you what I did to help myself work through it, right? I still had some remnants of the shame, even, if, even as I got on here, which is probably why I was like, I don't want to talk about the other stuff that I want to talk about because I couldn't, I couldn't be clear because I was still processing this. But even talking about this is, is really helping me like in real time. So when I, when I, you know, so I came home. Let me talk about my process and then I'll go back in. So I, I, you know, I came home and I was still feeling tight. Like I, I can, I can feel the, the constriction in my body. I can tell the difference between my expansion and, and my constriction. 
and I could feel it. It feel it just feels like this inside. And on the outside, I look totally fine, you know, but energetically it was different. You know, I'm talking to my sons, but I'm still feeling tight in my face. You know, I'm still like, you know, and mind you, this is all over me being like, okay, guys, it's time to go home. Let's go. And folks were not moving. They just didn't want to hear me and me feeling kind of punched in the gut. Like, oh, I have no power here. I don't belong here anymore. No one's listening to me. And then me speaking to one person and they were like, no, I'm good. Thanks. And me like, <laughs> oh my God. And then, and then me wondering, well, was I coming across too strong? Was, did I say, let's go home too many times? Are they going to be like, why was she trying to rush us out? You know? And, and like I said, all this story is going through my head and are they not going to like me anymore? And, and, and all of this is playing and I come home and I know when I'm feeling constricted, I, 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 you know, you have methods. If you don't get some methods, I have methods. And so what I did is I came home and recently what's been helping me to like, whenever I, whenever I start to feel myself going into my body, I will either find binaural beats on YouTube. I will find some positive thinking person on YouTube to listen to, to take my focus on and place it elsewhere. So I'll do that. I came home and I clicked on the office because I'm rewatching it. And that's been great for just keeping me in this happy space and making me laugh because I needed to disrupt the energy. I needed to do something because the energy was like this and I needed to do something to kind of make it, you know, so that it could start to break up and, and dissipate. And this is part of what this is part of what it is to be embodied because you can feel it. You can feel the emotions like literally inside of you. And then when you have tools, you know how to disperse the energy and break it up so that it doesn't have a hold on you. So now I'm good. Now I don't, now I can tell the story. I'm not feeling the shame. I'm not worried about somebody liking me or not. And here's why. Because the divine presence I am is the source and substance of all my good. <laughs> because... Humans are not the source and substance of, of, of anything for me. And now somebody will say, yeah, but let's say, like, but we need people, right? Like if you're in business or friendships or family, like you do need people. And, and I completely agree because I don't think that we are meant to, to travel this world alone as, as humans in general. I don't believe that. But you find the tribe you find the people that fit the energy you don't shift your north your center in order for other people to be okay with you because first of all that never solves the problem they can always still dislike you anyway and you can never be you and you can never relax it's like always being on the run your true self is always on the run you know because as soon as you hold your truth of the divine i am energy that flows through you they might not like you i was talking to my 16 year old son yesterday or this morning and and you know he was saying it's funny when he curses because he rarely curses and he doesn't like it when i curse but he was like I, I was saying, you know, there are people, there are probably people who don't like me. He's like, why would they not like you? You're, you're so nice. He's like, I mean, there are people in the world who are assholes. And I was like, eh, I mean, assholes to who though? Right? I said, because they're assholes to one person and they're extremely lovable to another. And, and so if I believe that the divine presence, the divine I am, this omnipresent substance of the universe is responsible for all and everything, my source for everything, if that is my source, if I stay true to that source, I will never be without money, friends, love, community, anything. I won't be without that. Because I'm living my truest expression of me. And that's what I came here to do. And because I'm doing that, what's mine will be drawn to me. 
I don't have to seek other people's approval or worry about whether or not I've said something that they don't like. Now, this is different from if I feel like I've offended someone and I want to apologize for that or apologize for a misunderstanding. That's courtesy. But for me to rack my brain and wonder, you know, for even another millisecond, oh my God, are they not going to like me? Did I... You know, was I was I too was I too harsh? Did, you know, and I and 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 I could go to them when I see them next and say, "Hey, were you bothered by by what I said?" They'd probably be like, "No." Some of them might be like, "I didn't even hear you," and I would have spent energy. Understand? I would have spent energy, days, sitting in a stew of this, not creating, not loving. Not, not shifting my vibration, but instead having it contract within me. I would have set myself up to feel fear, the knots in my stomach, the, the heart palpitations, you know, anxiety and, 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 and oh my gosh, and I'm ashamed to see them. I don't want to see them. I, I want to avoid them because maybe they're going to look at me. As a, do you see how this just takes you off the center of your divine energy? Do you see how, how the ego runs with it and your divine abundant self is stuck in the back corner somewhere? If I truly believe that the divine substance I am, this, this, this omnipresent source of the universe, if I truly believe that I am the walking embodiment of this, I cannot worry about every mistake or thing that I have said because I am human I cannot carry around feelings of shame because I can forgive myself and really I, that's that's what's most important is is that I forgive myself it's it's always helpful if someone else forgives for a wrongdoing it is and I know you know this I don't know that everyone likes to hear that. But what's most important is that you forgive yourself. That removes the shame. And so this is what I did. I came home. I, 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 I watched something fun. I shifted the energy remembered that I hadn't come on for my live stream today and figured I would talk about this because it tied into statement two. Because if the divine I am is the source and substance of all my good, then why am I worried about other people? I lift up my mind and heart to be aware, to understand, and to know that the divine presence I am is the source and substance of all my good. Not people, not places, not things. The divine presence I am is the source and substance of all my good. Think about that next time you're really worried about whether someone's going to like you or not. About whether or not you should be ashamed of something you did or something that happened. Is the energy of those people the source of your love? Is it the source of your good? Is the energy of others the battery that powers you and keeps you operating? If that's the case, I encourage you to look inward and see if the divine substance I am can be that source for you instead because it is constant and ever flowing within you. Unlike humans who can shift from day to day. That is it for day 22. I will be back here tomorrow in the morning, and I think I will speak on sacred sexuality, plant medicine, and death. Thank you for being here. I will see you soon. Love you. Bye.